Please be seated and let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for either who you have been our God. You have been our heavenly God. You have led us from the beginning of this worship even unto this moment. Lord, as we go into your world and as the children go to the children uh, Sunday school, I pray for the Holy Spirit to take absolute control of all that we are going to do today. And you alone will be glorified. Thank you for all you will do. Blessed be your name, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sunday school. Children Sunday school, please. Follow me, teacher. Once again, I welcome each and every one of us into the presence of God. My little guy there, don't worry, it's just a, a, a matter of time. You will join them there also, right? So partake with us today. We are willing to accommodate you. It's just a matter of uh, maybe one or two years. You will join them, all right? And the Lord will increase our Sunday children's church in Jesus' name. Amen. It's important that we keep praying for our children's church. It's very, very important. They are our future. They are our future. Please, in your quiet time, always have them in prayers. And the Lord will bless us as we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. By the grace of God today, the Lord has laid um, a word in my heart. And the title of the word, of the message today is taken from our gospel reading, chapter 9, verse 55. Well, majority of the versions don't um, declare it clearly as I would love it to be. But I will read from the King James Version. It says, But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. I read that again. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Jesus rebuked John, the beloved. A disciple he loved so much. A disciple that loved him also so much. He rebuked them. He rebuked him. Not only John, John and his brother, James. Why did Jesus rebuke them? The scripture says that it was about time that Jesus was to be taken up. That means Jesus was supposed to be to ascend. He was still in the flesh, but the time for Jesus to be glorified was almost at the corner. And so they were passing through Samaria, uh, Samaria and they were going to Jerusalem because the scripture says that his face was towards Jerusalem. And at that particular period, the disciples, they, and Jesus and the disciples were trying to preach or not trying. They were winning souls. But the people refused to accept them. He refused to accept. And so, John and James, being passionate men, decided that I think in their family, passion runs. They've been with Christ for about three and a half years. And they felt, look, this man is the son of God. This man carries the power. This man carries the main thing, the raw emma of the word of God dwells within. So why are you people not accepting? And they made the mistake of saying, Lord, should we call fire from heaven upon these people so that they will be consumed just like Elias, just like Elijah did in time of old, so that they will be consumed. And Jesus turned back and looked at them. He rebuked them and said, you don't know the spirit you are. You are made of. 
How does this scripture apply to me and to you? How does it apply to all that we have read today? Now, if we go forward, you will discover that if you, every Bible, uh, uh, a student of the Bible will know that these two people were, from there, they were called the sons of thunder. Because they want to fall fire from heaven. But how does this affect you and me? Today, the scripture, the Old Testament reading that we read was about the call of Elisha. After Elijah said, I told God, ha, ah, it was only me alone that is left. These people, oh, after the complaint, God told him, go and anoint Azahel. Anoint you. Anoint Elisha to be with you, to be your servant, to minister after you. In similar manner, you and I have been called of God. It's not that we are only born into a Christian family. It's not that we just act, we just we're just a church going person. Our purpose of knowing Christ, of accepting Christ, is to influence others. It's to win more souls for Christ. It's to bring others into the kingdom of God. That's why we are called. That's why I am a Christian. That is why you are a Christian. And I don't believe there's anybody in this auditorium or who is watching online who calls himself a Christian and says that that is not the reason why he's called. That is why. Bible says that we may proclaim the kingdom of him who has called us out of darkness into the, his mother's light. That's what we are. That's who we are. That's why we are called. That's the reason. But let's look at it. Now, the disciples were called, just like as we were called, and they want to call fire on those who have not accepted Christ. That's the reason why Jesus decided to rebuke them, to call them to order that, look, your reason for being called is to win souls. Your reasons for being a Christian, for me and you, is to win souls. If we look at the ministry of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we'll discover that Jesus <coughs> is tough, or was tough, when he's handling the Pharisees. Yes, he rebukes them. Yes, he talks to them, tell them where they have gone wrong. He's hard on them because he knows that the Pharisees have created barriers for people to enter into the kingdom of God. But when he meets a sinner, he's gentle on them. Remember when Zacchaeus attempted to see Christ and had to climb up the tree, sycamore tree. He stood by it and said, Zacchaeus, come down. Today, salvation has come to you. He says, come down, because I am going to stop in your house. I'm coming into your house today. See, the two sides of Jesus, but it's uniform because he rebukes those who are creating barriers for people to enter into the kingdom of God. But at the same time, those who are sinners, he welcomes them. He says the Son of Man is sent not to, not to, not to, the Son of Man is not sent, okay, after those who are already here. No, it's to, he, he said to seek those who are sick, to heal those who are sick. That's who he is. And that's what God has called you and I. But the issue that we need to look at myself and yourself is this. In what way have we become 
John and James. Probably we are like John and James, we have dwelt in the presence of God for long. In what way has my way of life become a barrier? Or have I become somebody who wants to now destroy those that Jesus has come to see? Am I standing in their way just as the Pharisees do? do? Or Do I intend to destroy them to come through the words of my mouth, through the actions that I take, through the way that I relate with the people in my surroundings, the people that God has called for me to influence upon? That's what the scripture today is trying to make us understand. Now let's go to the, uh, uh, to the epistle. If we look at the epistle, chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, Paul was telling the Galatians that they are already called. They are called. You and I, as we said, whether you like, for us, as we are today, we are called. And we must acknowledge that. And we must live a life of the called person. A life of somebody who has been accepted into the kingdom of God, who God has called, uh, uh, has sent out as his ambassador. We are supposed to win people into the kingdom of God. How well am I doing that? How well are you doing it? How well am I welcoming people? There are some people, if an unbeliever meets them, will tell you, no, if, if you are, if you are the epitome of Christianity, look, I don't want to accept your Christ because of the way of life. Because you are just not open to anybody. It's like you are saying, Lord, I have entered. You can close the door. May my case and your case not be like that in Jesus' name. Amen. Am I stopping others from accepting Jesus? That's what I need to ask myself. That's what we all need to ask ourselves. Are we standing, are we, have, have we become barrier to the kingdom of God? We are not supposed to be. We are supposed to be a channel, a channel. At least some of us here know what the channel is. The Dover Channel and Co. It's an entrance, an entrance to UK or to um, to France. We are supposed to be like that. We are not supposed to be the barrier that will stop people from thinking into the kingdom of God. Because the whole responsibility of Christ is to bring people into the kingdom of God. A song, a name says. That the heart shall be filled. Even the scripture says it was it, it was an aim that is taken from the scripture says for, in the book of Habakkuk in chapter two it says and the heart shall be filled with the knowledge of God's glory as the waters covers the sea. So if this app, if this environment, if this W six is going to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters covers the sea, then I and you must become a worthy vessel, a worthy channel that brings people, that attracts. We must be magnets. That magnets, a magnet that brings people out of darkness into the light of God. I must have that character. I must have that enthusiasm. I must be warm to people. It's not about just rebuking them. It's not about um, saying them. You, you just have to accept them with love. I remember in the course of this week, our Reverend posted something on a platform when he went to Shepherd Bush. I don't know, some of us might not have seen it, but some of us have read it. When he met a woman 
And she was, the woman was talking about what a beautiful day the day was. And he said, yes. Even though there were differences, he was trying to tell her about this beautiful day was created by Jesus. It was created by God. He said, no, I don't believe it. It's created by the universe. Yes, they might be far from our own opinion, but out of love, out of persistence, out of care, out of welfare occasionally, we might win them unto God. Paul said, I became a Jew to, to win the Jews. He became uncircumcised to win the uncircumcised. But in everything that he does, he does not change his position in Christ. Why is the Lord telling us this this morning? It is easy for us as Christians to become more judgmental than even God. Christ has come to save, to redeem all that are redeemable. Because Jesus himself said, all that you have given me in John chapter 17, I have kept, except for the son of perdition. So the only one he lost was the son of perdition, who had been ordained to be lost from the onset. Because Paul, uh, Peter would have been lost. But he prayed for him, and he was redeemed. He prayed for as many people. He, in chapter 17, he prayed for the church. He prayed for Christ, the body of Christ. And those who were there, who were counted as redeemable, were redeemed. But the son of perdition was lost. What you and I are called to do is to redeem the redeemable in our whole time. My brother, my sister, there are redeemables around us. What are we doing about them? Are we using our life to welcome them? Or we are using our life to send them away? Today, God is reminding us. Today is the 13th Sunday in ordinary time, according to the Christian calendar. But I need to remind you, there's nothing ordinary about the ordinary time here in the Christian calendar. Because if it had been ordinary, the purpose of God, the purpose and the coming of Christ would not have been what we are studying right now. And so it's important for us. Christ has come to redeem, but he will still come again. This time around is to judge. So why don't we leave the judgment to Christ? Why do we want to be the judge? Why am I making myself the judge? It is Christ who will judge all things. So why don't I leave them to be judged by Christ, but help them into coming into the kingdom of God? That's where our focus should be. Not create a barrier to our perception or our personal judgment. And then they feel it. You know, we are social beings. People will feel the emotion you exude to somebody is what most likely that person will replicate back to you. And so, if we go to them in care, if we go to them in love, if we go to them with open heart and in prayer, just as a reverend had done to that person, because shortly after that, he's asking us that we should keep on praying for that woman that she will come to the light of the word of God. If we go to them like that, I am sure the Bible says that the prayer of the saints, the effectual prayer of the saints, it avails much. That means it brings results. Our prayers, our offering, I'm talking of offering in terms of sacrifice, will surely then, to surely do great things and bring more into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen.